this world. Changing your mindset. Life of service is what everybody desire and what every society need for us to have a better and a good society to live in. Good to have you on another edition of your weekly TV talk show, Be This World. It's my pleasure to have you join us this week. A quick break, I'll be right back. Don't get away. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Be This World. And today on the show, my guest is a political expert to reckon with in Nigeria. And we'll be talking about himself and other things in respect of service to you and I. If you actually agree with me that each and every one of us needs to give a life of service for us to have a better society. And it's no other person than Chief Chibuzo Nduweze, Ziki Azike. Amazing by one. <laughs> Chief, good to have you on this one. Thank you for having me. I salute you, Nigeria. Well, when you say amazing ba, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Please, can you explain that word for the, us, for the benefit of those people who will not understand what it actually meant? Omezimba. Omezimba, the Yoruba equivalent of Omezimba is Atuluche. That is somebody who builds the community, somebody who builds the society, somebody who reforms, who, who impacts positively, a builder of the community. Hmm. That's what Omezimba means, who beautifies the community. Like I said, the Yoruba word that captures the essence of the Omezimba title is Atuluche. So I'm actually at, at Which means your life is all about service. All, I, all I'm about is improving anywhere God puts me. And that's what I have been doing in these last 58 years of my life. And glory be to God. I'd like to think that I'm giving it my best shot. Now, uh, Chibuzo N, Ziki, Aziki and Co. is a, a law firm that is actually doing well. Oh. It is a company. Yes, Chibuzo and Nzigi Azike and Co. is no longer functional. Yeah. Chibuzo and Nzigi Azike and Co. merged with BG Mustafa and Associates. Yes, yes, yes. And we became Adred Lex and Co. Yeah. And that's the law firm where I work. work. And you're doing very well in that aspect. Now, why do you want to go into politics? Or oh, why have you gone into politics? Because we already know that you're a, you're, 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 you're a figure to reckon with in politics. Well, so why did you go yes, into politics? I'm in politics because I tell people that the only thing superior to God Almighty is political power. Because politics gives you a platform and an opportunity to impact your world and change so many things. With power, you can do so much. It's, you can have all the money, and just one policy from government will change how your business goes. So basically, my, my interest in politics is because I'm seeking that higher important platform for service. Because I know my limitations as a successful lawyer are, are very, very severe. So my limitations are very huge. But I believe that if, I'm, if, I'm, if, I, if God gives me access to political power, I will use it. And I, not only that, to demystify power itself. Because what we need to do is to show that power in, in, for its own sake is, 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 is nothing, it's vanity. Yeah. But what, what makes power important is what you're able to do with power. With power, yeah. We saw someone like Nelson Mandela demystifying power because so many people think that once you're there, you don't want to go, you cannot want to leave power. And if you use the other example of Mugabe who wanted to continue to stay in power. But Nelson Mandela went there gave it his best shot and said no, in spite of all the clamor for him to continue. So you show that it was not just about power, it's about what you do with it. Now, I like what you said about Nessie Mandena. They said, my absolute power intoxicates. In your letter you wrote to Abga, you said you're only asking for one tenor. You're not going again. And we've seen stories in Nigeria after the first tenor, they want to come back again. I want to show that's what I say, I want to demystify power. Yeah. By God's grace, God being my helper, 
after my first term from, tw from 2019 to 2023, I'll give such sterling service to Imo people. I lift the bar of governance in every meter, in all indexes of human development um, ratings. And by the time we show what we can do as per integrity, service, abiding by the rule of law, and showing that you can actually discharge your responsibilities without having any other agenda than just giving the people all you have, your best. I'm telling you the truth, my sister Bidi. By May 2023, May 29, there will be so much clamor. Imo people will be weeping for me to continue, but I'll tell them no. Because I want to show that you can give your best in four years. Yeah. Mbakwe that we are talking about, Mbakwe become is still a, a constant refrain in Imo. He only worked for four years, even though he had a mandate to work for eight years. But after the, just the first term, a few months into the second term, it was terminated. And but we see that he was able to make an impact. Muritara Muhammad, who is still being talked about today, all the reforms you engendered was just done in a very short period. My father worked with Mbakwe. My father was a local government chairman for Mbano, which is now two local governments. We have created out of the Mbano that my father chaired. My father was chairman of Mbano local government under Mbakwe. Until today, I am still a beneficiary of the goodwill, of the legacy of the good name. He left for the four years he worked for Mbano people. His, his name still resonates. So what you need to give your best is not forever. It is making the best of that time that God puts you there. It could just be six months, like Murita Mohammed. Just two months. It could yes. Just one you, year. You, you don't. You, you work like you have no second chance. Exactly. And I'm not going to have a second chance to impact on any more people than those first those four years that I'm going to give them service. No, like I, no other. I, I like the references you make, Mbakwe. Imo, you will agree with me. In the southeast of Nigeria, has been one state that has been unfortunate with governance. Now, what is that thing? that will make an Igbo person, Imo person, pick up his or her PVC to vote for Ziki Azike as their governor in the next coming election. The, the Imo story must change. There must be an epiphany in Imo state in 2019. And the Imo story will change by God's grace because the Abga, Abga, the Abga brand, which has worked in Anambra state now for the third successive term now, has shown that it's a brand that delivers. But beyond the Abka brand, I, in my own personal, with due deference to modesty, in my own personal life, I represent some, some, some measure of integrity. There is no place that God has put me in, in these last 58 years that I've been alive, that I have not left some small mark in my profession, in my community, in my church. I have always been in a position where I can give a good account of myself. I'm not going to change. And I say, I, ha I come bearing in mind that I, my father left me a legacy of a good name. I'm not going to spoil it. Now, talking about Abga, we know... I can only build on that name. Exactly. We know, we know APC, we know PDP, we know there are states that where they're working and there are states where they're not working. So far from the party we're not talking about, we're talking about Zike Azike as a person here now. Do you understand? Zike Azike, yeah. Zike Azike as delivers. a person. What is it that will make an emo person say no? No matter what, this is the man. Yeah, I always tell people that, you see, the most important work is governance. And yet, people make the mistake of entrusting governance in people who have no references. Because you usually hear that by the time you elect the person, you are hearing that, ah, didn't you know that he was this, he was this? Did you people know that he was a crook or he was this, he was that? That's what they always tell us, right? And I tell everybody that because we make the mistake of working with, thinking that, oh, this person, I think I know him, and he's going to be my friend. Yeah. When actually you know him, but what, how you know him is not, not as he's an honest man. It's not like somebody who has made a mark in, in a career. You know him because you know that you, 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 you have access to him. But what you see, you see that in this thing, there are no gray areas. You're either good or you're bad, right? And I want to say that we do deference to modesty. Only God knows who is good. But I believe that you will not hear any bad thing about me 
no matter how much forensic inquiry and inquest you make about my character, I have worked in the banking industry and I left on my own terms. I have been a practicing law and in my own right, I've also been a trailblazer. I'm the first Imo lawyer of the old Imo state to be registered by SEC as a capital market advisor. So, and having invo been involved in heavy transactions, having also handled clients who have, you will not hear me, I've, I've, I've kept faith. And I believe that with these credentials, I'm not going to mind them because of four years. What I want to do is to set a standard. Let's lift the bar in Imo. And I pray that God Almighty will use me to raise that bar so that the people can respect governance in Imo and Imo will no longer be a Mara. If you know what Naomi said, he said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Mm -hmm. Because if you remember when the Israelites, they were in Mara, the water was bitter before it was now purified by God and it became sweet. Exactly. So Mara represents bitterness. So what I'm saying is that I'm telling Imo people that the Amara days are over, over by God's grace. And I'm going to be the vessel that Imo God will use. No. <laughs> I like that. I like it. They say politicians, they don't, incredibility, they don't have it. That they say a lot of things to get to the office. And by the time they get to the office, it becomes a different thing altogether. How credible are you as a person? In fact, my father told me that the only currency that does not diminish the value is integrity. And in this race, of all of us who are running for governor in Imo State, most of them, I believe, if not almost all of them, have deeper pockets than me. The only currency I have, and it's the only currency that doesn't um, um, that doesn't get um, devalued, right, is credibility and integrity. That's the only thing I have. That might be a problem. That's the only thing I have. That might be a problem. They have deeper pocket than you. Maybe you are going to Douglas' house to fill your own pockets. Have you thought about that? Well, the, that, the fact that I have not lacked, uh, there is nowhere I am that I'm not known as a success story. I am not a wealthy man. But I'm credible, and that's actually why I have the capacity to win that election, because I believe that there will be so many volunteers, people who want, who are looking for good governance in Imo, will invest in that process. So I have no money now, but I'm, I have capacity to raise money, money. to win that election, election more than any other person in that race. Now tell us about and because you. people, Nigeria is craving for good leadership, and Igbo people want a story, the story of Imo State to change, change. and they are prepared to do what they can do to see that the Imo story changes. Because Imo is the, called the Imo Heartland. Yeah. We represent so much. But they're not doing well. We'll do well. I pray God so. being our helper. Amen. <laughs> now, now tell us. So my currency doesn't depreciate because it is credibility. It's and integrity. integrity. I like that. I like that word. Now, Godfather reason. They said you will not win election in Nigeria without having a godfather. Who is your godfather in the next coming election? And who has been? Because you've been in politics. But before you answer that question, let's go for a quick break. And when we return, we we'll continue. Don't go away. Please stay with Thank us. Sometimes they misunderstand me 
and I keep it simple. I don't really care what thing anybody and about me. I just try to keep my head up. There's no need for compromise. And there's no time, so no delay. Just be maintaining it up. Motivating, elevating, fortifying, and visualizing. Every day providing for my peeps and family. But I still they want to run me down, Sarah. Them only want to see me frown, nah, nah. Them only want to see me hanging. All the hypocrites and Pharisees, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them only want to pull you down, baby. Yeah. Only want to see you frown, yeah, yeah. But yeah, your love is so amazing. So keep on elevating. I still never dare to claim you holy so I hope you hold my cell, I yeah, Hope you hold my prophet. And I should for the other form of my soul. I hope you get all the feelings I I hope the people go to shine. Welcome, my you just joining us. This is BD Sword. And my guest today on the show has been Chief Chibuzo Ndueze Ziki Azike. And we've been talking about service and emo in focus. Yeah. Now, sir, God for that reason is one thing everybody feel that for well, you to win election in Nigeria, somebody must be there. Who is your Godfather, and what is your view about God for that reason in Nigerian election? I have run so many elections. Like, in fact, not just I've run elections in the past. I've also done boy boy for very big names in politics. But somehow, God didn't allow the situation when I had visible buses for me, for this opportunity to come. Mm -hmm. Today, the only Godfather I have is God himself, right? But then I have served. I've lived a life of service. So I, in my, so, so I have, and what it has built for me is enormous goodwill. So I am not a product of one person. I'm going to be a product of, like I said, all those who desire good governance in Imo. So I will not, I'll be beholden to a multitude of people who constitute Imo State. Because there is such a hunger for good governance in Imo State. And there is nobody who has the capacity to bear the burden of sponsoring one candidate to win that election. The person who will be Imo governor will be a product of what Imo people call Ahazirume, meaning that the people will gather and do it. It is going to be a convergence of all men of goodwill, the communities, the churches, all the leaders, the, all, the, all the stakeholders in Imo. We play a role because our no, votes no, will count. Don't you think that will be a problem? Then when they converge to elect you in, or maybe probably when they converge to, sorry, let me use the right word, sponsor you by the time you get to douglas house they not expect you to sign contract for them favor them do things for them now let me I tell you in fact because the community and emo people as a body mm. in one phalanx will support me what they will now expect is that i'll also do projects that will impact on communities today and i thank god for that that we have 27 buildings in the 27 local governments. These buildings are not completed projects, but I'm happy that they are there. And I commend Governor Koroja for those 27 buildings. He calls them hospitals, but buildings don't make hospitals. By God's grace, if I'm able to turn them to hospital, those communities have benefited. Lives will be saved. Everybody in that community, their life expectancy will improve because of the quality of the institution we will have established with that building. Because the building doesn't create an institution. It is what you turn it to that makes it an institution. Exactly. A health institution, a healthcare institution. Exactly. Right? Uh, primary or secondary. So what we're going to do will impact on the people. That's what the people are looking for. Exactly. The people are looking for what will change their lives. Their life. What will improve Give it their a lives. meaning. Right? And having also watched my father when he was in government and how they were able to take care of the people. The problem with Imo is that the money that enters Imo doesn't circulate amongst the Imo people. Hmm. Because people in governance are also the contractors. 
So the people don't get to do any job. I don't have any interest in doing contract. I don't have any siblings who have interest in doing contract. So the Imo money, we work for Imo people. And that way, you can see whatever comes into Imo will be also disbursed or be used to service the Imo economy. economy. What has been happening is that the Imo economy has been a funnel to drain the Imo resources hmm. outside Imo. We hope to change that story. Now, you were once the governing council in the Imo State University. And like what is said earlier, uh, Imo State in the southeast of Nigeria is one of the best states when it comes to education. They have a lot of informed people. But when it comes to governance, they are at the zero level. So being once a governing council and now you want to be the governor of Imo State, what do you intend to do to at least make Imo shine? Not just in the southeast, but in Nigeria, in Africa, in West Africa. Imo shining is a must. It will definitely happen when, by God's grace, we get into governance in Imo. First, there is that some tax ahead. Like we have rebuilding Imo is a major, is a, is a kind of nightmare. But I thank God that I've had exposure in, in governance and in management and in restoration. So because of my inspiration, my, my experience in, in, in commerce as a player in that field, as an advisor, you know, I have capacity to envision the type of things we're going to do that will lift the bar in Imo. Like I, I tell everybody, what it will take to change Imo is the same old story. You can say, I'll build new roads, I'll do 305, I'll do that. Pick anybody's manifesto. They are talking about what they can do to impact and change the story. But why do they fail? Because there's no... Like I said, look, finding how to fix Nigeria is, is the easiest story. Tell, I'll me, tell, you. tell me why do they fail. No, I'll I'm tell you. Because if you pick up Vision 2010, mm. Vision 2020, there's a roadmap to what you can use and change the Nigeria story. It started from when they started having the rolling plans in the, in the development plans in the 70s and 80s before they had Vision 2010. If you, if you have the heart the sincerity of purpose, the honesty to deliver those projects and those timelines and, and programs contained in those visions, your strength will be better. What we need are men of sincerity of purpose who can lift those visions up and render them, materialize them. That's what we need. So when anybody tells you, what will you do? What will you do? Pick any document, you will try and have a good heart, you will do it. You you've, not told me, of you've not told me why most of those policies failed. Failure of character. Character okay. is the issue. Of if character. the man has character, if he's a man who knows that his word is his bond and that he wants to, he seeks to do this, he will do it. Now, the vision is clear. The, 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 the documents that capture the vision, like I said, is both, if I pick, I've, I've seen very good manifestos by people who have run for election anymore. One of them, Emeka Wajoba, had a very good manifesto. My brother, Okeze, who is also running now in Abga, has a very good manifesto. I've been studying them. I wonder why your own manifesto. Uh, excuse me. Eh? I, I am not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I read and I take the best from everywhere. That is what we need. It's I'm not, okay. I'm, it's see, not a you know, Mr. I, we don't have all the time to talk. I need to take the best of everything. I have my own personal ideas. <laughs> it's okay. And it's I'm okay. going to use all these things to, because I have the sincerity of purpose. I'll deliver on them. This is, well, so, I'm not, uh, uh, not uh, covering uh, the wheel. In, in, in wrapping up, you said you're promising Imo people if they vote you, you're going to turn around Imo State. Yes, because first of all, uh, if you have integrity, that means that you will not steal their money. That means that if you say, if you nominate, you will not be viewed things um, and structures that we fail Failed. that you you want you you allow institutions to run, run. the civil there'll be a civil service anymore mm. there'll be a, a obedience to the rule I of law the rule you, of you'll law. be able to execute contracts you see let me tell you i'll, I'll tell you how he was able to build roads it's okay no, it's okay. what i tell you he told me how he was able to build those roads and i have i'll, I'll, I'll use his model it's okay. and no build problem. i know how how uh, my brother peter b was able to build roads. I know how Uli Obiano is performing. And I'll you, use them. We, I, I'm and not, you need to build companies because what is running in Imo State is hotel. We uh, don't need uh, them. Thank we you. It's to, a disaster. We need to build it's a disaster. companies in Imo. I have a program for that. To because, jobs. Because, because we must. We must. We have already built the companies. We just restart them, remodernize them, and update them 
to 21st century standards. It's okay. And I've also, I'm working it's with... It's okay, Mr. Ziga, we have another one. That's the one you can take for today. Thank you, my sister. Thanks for coming and Thank thanks you. for giving us your word. And let your word be your band. Don't change. I won't change. I don't change, please. Wow, please, just a one word to your viewers who are watching you. Just one word. Just tell them one word. Pray. Pray. Pray that Imo gets the best governor they can get. And by God's grace, that governor will be Chief Chibuzo Nweze Ziggy Azike Mezimba. Kanga Mejimo. I like that. <laughs> wow, you have heard it from uh, my guest himself. <laughs> he said, Pray, pray, pray. Who else would live in this country without praying? Ah, you know, we are a praying country. That's one thing I know we are good at. We pray a lot. I mean, so I'm praying. Even as I'm sitting here, I'm praying. He has said it all. Integrity. And what is a man without an integrity? That's much we're taking today on Ready Soul Show. Like, if you missed this interview, you can watch it online on www.readysword.tv. Bye. <laughs>